Oh, so when I first learned how to make halale, I didn't actually get to cut and I didn't get to string. I was just the girl who like broke the pieces apart, washed it, brought it to the aunties. And then eventually as like, um, I had more experience in it, then they let you do more jobs. So it's, you know, kind of like making an emu. First, you're just a girl who, you're just a kid who washes the rocks and eventually, you know, maybe you get to help gut the pig. But, um, I think now I'm, I'm good at it and, um, I can lead making the lay. And so I think with your own children, I think lay making is a, a good way to, um, teach kids small skills, stringing things, how to care for things, how to make observations, um, you know, in the aina, like what's ready, what's not ready. Aloha, I'm Iliahi Anthony. Um, I'm a laymaker and a weaver, and um, I come from Hilo. We gathered this ahui hala from Richardson's or Waiuli, and uh, we had a long, a long pole, and we looked up at the tree and decided that we wanted certain ones that we could reach and we could kind of see the color kind of in the fruit, the mature ones. The color is gets a darker orange as it gets more ripe. It's composed of a bunch of different uh, keys, so the key hala. And in the middle, it's connected to the, the ikoi or the, the core of the, of the fruit. So after you pick your hala, you're gonna, you need to open it up. So you can use a screwdriver, you can kind of hit it on the ground. Sometimes that bruises it a little bit and then um, pull them off nicely with your hands so that um, the pieces are good. One fruit could probably make about, depending on the size of the fruit, maybe two lace. Um, so the supplies you're going to need, you're going to need a cutting board, you're going to need a utility knife or an exacto knife. I suggest, I like the number two blade, but I don't think that's everybody's preference. A bowl with some water, and I like to put a little lemon in my water because it is a fruit and it, um, like an apple, it turns color. So it's, you put a little bit of lemon, it keeps the, it keeps the fruit from turning color and um, nice and fresh. And you'll need some good string, uh, maybe like measured about an amana long, so that's about two yards. Uh, um, a little bit thicker than regular thread because um, the fruit is really heavy, so it kind of needs hefty string. So I sometimes I use like a thick crocheting thread, and I like a needle that has an eye and not a needle that has a hook because the hala because it's so thick and it's it's heavy, it tends to like rip the hook. So um, when cutting, you always cut off the vela or the, the tip of the, of the fruit, the orange side or the yellow side, just a little bit just to keep a clean edge. And then um, you'll notice that there's ridges and the, the seed um, sort of tapers. We're going to uh, angle our knife so that the tip of the knife, um, every time you cut into the hala, is going to hit the same point at the, the lowest taper of the fruit that you can cut because the seed is really hard inside. And so you're gonna create a point with each ridge that you cut on the, on the hala. And then the seed will go in your bucket and the little crown will go in your bowl of lemon water. And it'll sit there until you cut enough to string a lay. So when stringing it, um, my, I don't, this is just the way I do it. I string it from the top of the crown through to the bottom and um, on my string and then I have my lay, push them really close to each other and I string about two or three on my needle at a time before I push them down. I think when, um, when working with hollow because of what it represents, the passing, that it's um, really important to be um, really aware and conscious of, of what it means and what it represents and how other people might internalize that information and I'm aware of um, what I'm giving and be conscious that some people maybe don't have the same kind of relationship with the hala and that they might not be comfortable wearing it. I think that you have to treat your whatever your practice is or the, the things that you're working with, your ladies, your, your things, as if they were a body and so I'd never step over things or um, or kind of cast them aside or, or keep everything nice and clean and um, cleaned 
cleaned up and and um, take things back to where I got them from. So whatever the hakina or the leftovers, I'll take it back outside to the tree.